Hi everyone, you are welcome to my channel. Today we'll be going through cerebral malaria. By World Health Organization definition of cerebral malaria, it is a clinical syndrome characterized by coma for at least one hour post seizure or after hypoglycemia has been adequately treated. It is also associated with essential forms of plasminum fasciparum on peripheral blood smears. That is why it is called malaria. It is the most severe neural complication of plasmodium fasciparum affecting children the most. Mortality is pretty high. This problem is more of a tropical country issue, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa. Children under 15 years are affected the most in Africa, but there is a change in Southeast Asia where cerebral malaria is common among adults. Hundreds of millions of people are affected yearly. Just 1% of all malaria will be severe malaria. Cerebral malaria is the worst neural problem associated with severe malaria. There is a full presentation on severe malaria already published right here in my channel. So you can click on this very link to lead you to full presentation on severe malaria. Pathophysiology. Well, mostly unknown. Actually, in medicine, when we don't know the cause, we find another way out. We call it idiopathy. Here, there are hypotheses anyway. Um, one of the hypotheses is that parasites in red blood cells with increased mass will increase erythrocytes agglutination and rosettes are formed with non-parasitized red blood cells or platelets. The above will lead to impaired perfusion and apoxia, with decreased oxygen and glucose supply to the brain that will lead to coma. Still on part two, scarsogony leads to the release of antigens, which in turn will lead to the release of cytokines and chemokines. Other factors that could play one or more roles will include endothelial injury, apoptosis, blood brain barrier dysfunction, and intracranial abstention. Still on Pato, as per the scissors that will likely be found here, Plasmodium fasciparum on its own is epileptogenic. That is, Plasmodium fasciparum is capable of triggering epilepsy, and this is likely going to occur mostly in children. Phenobarbital will be helpful, but high dose of phenobarbital for treatment of prophylaxis is dangerous. You can kill. Now, let me summarize the part right here that the cupris will be parasitized red blood cells that are sequestered in cerebral microvasculation. Local endothelial injury and apoptosis will develop. Inflammation will set in and there will be broad brain barrier dysfunction. Still on the summary of part two, there will be brain swelling and intracranial hypertension. Sequestration leading to a positive brain injury will occur. Multiple mechanisms are involved. Magnetic resonance imaging is the best neuroimaging. Pathogenesis is still poorly known. So what I have presented here is just the hypothesis. No one is sure for now or have not seen the literature where it has been categorically stated that this is what is responsible, that this hypothesis is reasonable. Now, let's go through the clinical features of cerebral malaria. First thing first, coma. Let's address that coma. The coma must be there for at least one hour, and it must be there after termination of seizures 
or after we have adequately treated hypoglycemia. In other words, there must not be ongoing seizures and there must be no hypoglycemia. And there is coma. Presence of essential forms of plasmodium falciparum on peripheral blood film or peripheral blood smear must be present. So, how do you even make the diagnosis that this is malaria related if you can't find plasmodium? Now, plasmodium is present and it is specifically plasmodium falciparum, essential forms. Other causes of coma must have been ruled out before you can say this is cerebral malaria. Other causes of coma must have been ruled out and plasmodium must be present on peripheral blood smear. May not be able to rule out other confounding factors. So let me explain that. Someone is in coma. You've ruled out other possible causes of coma, but plasmodium is present so you can say, okay, this is cerebral malaria. This coma is secondary to malaria. Okay, fine. There are other possible confounding factors that may you know, contribute to that. Loss of consciousness is the peak of the cerebral malaria. And later, the loss of consciousness would degenerate to coma. One to three days of fever in African children and then scissors could be presenting you no know, sign and symptom. Then the child will become weak, and then there will be loss of consciousness and finally become comatose, with or without death. Here on clinical features, you no know, generally in malaria, there will be presentation with fever, headache, body ache. In this case, delirium, pulmonary edema, we said this is severe malaria already. Okay. Anemia, hemoglobinuria, jaundice, shock, renal failure, respiratory distress, because we are dealing with severe malaria. Adults may have cortical infarcts, dura sinus thrombosis, cerebral venous thrombosis. All these were called in adults. So, to my listeners in Southeast Asia, where the cerebral malaria will likely occur in Nados, unlike in Sub-Saharan Africa, where cerebral malaria will likely occur in children, then MRI and CT will be required in Southeast Asia to rule out all this. Late death due to bacterial superimposed infection will likely do to shock. Some kids we have language disorder, post cerebral malaria. What are we talking about? No, the situation has affected the cerebral hemisphere. Of course, there's bound to be a lot of trouble, right? Some will have epilepsy. Cerebral malaria has treated seizures, is likely febrile seizures, with generalized sonic cloning and secondary generalized seizures. Now, I have three links here. The first one here, this very one, if you click on it, that will lead you to my full presentation on febrile seizures. If you click on this second link, this very one, this will take you to the treatment of febrile seizures. And the last link here, will take you to post ICTA symptoms. So right on my channel, you can have full presentations on febrile seizures, treatment of febrile seizures, and post ICTA symptoms. Please kindly click on them and get yourself educated more. Behavioral changes are shared with this will include inattention, impulsiveness, hyperactivity. So you could see not far from attention deficit and operative disorder, right? Just because of cerebral malaria. Conduct disorder, impaired social disorders, and obsessive compulsive disorders. Now, physical examination. We'll have general examination done, just have a 
thorough look at the young you know, man or woman or the adult if he's in um, Southeast Asia, then chef of power, point you to a name here, right? Abnormal respiration, retina hemorrhage, macula widening, papillo edema, and intracranial abstention. Then we must have full neuro, full cardiovascular system, respiratory system, abdomen, and skin all inspected. We will head to the lab. What are we going there to do? We want to know the level of hematocrit, level of glucose, then arterial blood gas for acidosis, electrolyte you know, acid for electrolyte imbalance, peripheral blood smear for paracetamia, that must be the first thing to be done anyways, urinalysis, renal function test, liver function test, with or without toxicology, and CT. Why did I say with or without? If the history is not so clear, and you want to rule out other causes of coma, then you have toxicological screening done. And of course, CT. Why trying to rule out other causes of coma? As far as treatment is concerned, I will refer you to the full presentation that I have published on the treatment of severe malaria. So you can click on this very link that will lead you to how to treat cerebral malaria already published by me. Post-treatment neuro problems. There's likelihood of neurological deficits after treatment. So the child is not dead, but then battling with neuro deficit. Cognitive impairment is likely to set in. Behavioral difficulties might show up. And of course, epilepsy from cerebral malaria. With that, I've come to the end of this presentation as per cerebral malaria. Thanks for listening. But please take time to go through all those links provided. With you going through all those links, you will have broader knowledge as per cerebral malaria. I appreciate. Please share this with all your friends. Let's do everything to relieve pain and sufferings in humanity. Thank you.